Hey, it is Kevin here with BombBomb, Bomb. and what you're about to watch in this webinar replay, whether you were able to make it and you're just reviewing some content, or you missed it and this is your first chance at it, is really how are we setting the right habits for 2023? One of the biggest themes that we see year over year that honestly affects business a great deal is gratitude. And we give you some direct strategies on how do you start to build some gratitude habits for yourself leading into this new year so you're directing business in the right way. Take a look. I hope you enjoy and find one or two nuggets that you can start implementing right now. We're excited to have you guys with us today. Um, we are going to be talking about building your end of year gratitude playbook. Um, you know, we do a good mix of really technical sessions where we're talking about new products, where we get really into more strategic things. Um, today's is really, it's kind of like a, it's a more wholehearted session. Right. We're going to talk about strategies for your business. And you might like be like, all right, Alicia, like this is all fluffy, but we've got data and research to back up not only um, what some of these practices are going to do for you um, and your inside life, but what it's actually going to do for your business. So we're excited to have you with us. Um, we're glad we have the chat. Please use that chat. Um, to interact throughout the session, to if you like something, if if there's something that resonates with you, tell us in the chat or tell the people in the chat. Um, if you've a strategy that we are showing that you've tried and you're like, yeah, this really worked for me or I had great results, share that with your bomb bomb community. We really love um, how everyone is able to learn from each other that way. Also, we, you do have that Q&A box. We have Michelle and Tora today hanging out in chat and in the Q&A. Um, they're going to answer questions as they come up. They'll leave for us to answer. And we're going to make sure that we do take time at the end as well to answer some questions. So uh, my name is Alicia, if you don't know me, I'm the national speaker here at Bomb Bomb, And every month I'm joined by my friend and colleague, Kevin, who's our client enablement manager. Morning, everybody. It's funny, we just forget to like introduce ourselves because we do these so consistently, right? So, <laughs> well, we're super excited to be here. I mean, it's, it's always funny talking about gratitude. And I'll tell you what, we sat for a few minutes, you know, the four of us touching base about this webinar and holy cow, I'm grateful for the people I get to work with, right? It makes such a, a huge difference in feeling tired this morning, feeling groggy, but when you're surrounded by the right things and those sort of the right people, it's amazing how that's going to change. And that's really what we're talking about a lot. Uh, we do want to take a quick look back on this year. I know it's not over yet. We've still got a month and a half left, but you know, it's a good time to start thinking back on, on how did this year go for us? What were some things that stood out to us? And we're going to take, you know, a few minutes and look at that. And then we're going to go into the why gratitude stuff, just like Alicia talked about. We can get into the psychology, the emotional side, the, the gratitude feels good stuff all day long. And trust me, I love living in that space. Don't get me wrong. But we know that we also want to give you really strategic business reasons as to why this is a topic that you need to pay attention to. So we're going to go there and then we're going to dive really into how do you build your gratitude playbook. I really highlighted the your part um, because I think playbooks can be wonderful, but can also be sometimes a little bit too specific on like, you have to do these steps. And yes, we're going to give you some really good guidelines, but I want you to have some say in that as well as you're building your playbook. And then little teaser for the end of this, um, we are going to give you a little piece of gratitude with something that we're really excited to, to tell you all about that we've been working on here at Bomb. Bomb. I did see a quick chat there, Keith. Thank you for asking this. Um, yes, we will be recording this webinar. We absolutely will be sending this email out. Um, it usually takes a, a, a day or two, and then we'll get that, that recording emailed out to you. So feel free if you need to jet early or if you miss something, we will send that to you so you can kind of recap on that. So here's kind of our first question that I want to give you all a second to, to ruminate on and think about. When you think back on this year, on 2022, what are some themes that stand out for you? And I'm going to let your mind can take that wherever you want to. And if you feel like sharing those in the chat, of course, would love to hear some of those sort of things. Um, if a, if your mind goes to a more personal place, right? Some themes that kind of sit out from that sense. Totally get it. This has been a crazy year. Uh, we're obviously talking more from a business standpoint in this conversation. So I do want to encourage you to think from a business standpoint, what are some things when you think about maybe the top couple themes that stand out for you over this year? What are those? I'll throw a couple up. I did wait to put these up there because I don't want to lead you in any direction, but some things that as I've asked this question to people over the last few weeks, here's some things that I've started to hear, right? Problem solving, growth, emergency issues, right? Having to deal with stuff as it comes up, um, strategizing. I see growth and learning. Everything is an emergency for Lori, right? So <laughs> I think we can all relate to a degree to that. 
Alicia, is there anything that kind of popped in your mind or any of these that stand out to you as, as themes you're thinking of? Oh, I mean, I think definitely growth for sure. I think this has definitely been a year of like trying to get rooted again, kind of coming out of the haze and, and finding that rooting and, and growing new branches. That's definitely been a theme this year for sure. Yeah. And it's important. This has been a crazy year, right? That last bullet point of cutting back, I know is something that a lot of us are feeling to some degree, whether we have been part of the cutting back or whether we're somebody who's having to make decisions on cutting back softwares, cutting back people and jobs and those sort of things with everything going on in the world. Man, that's a theme. That's kind of a, yeah. a universal theme that's going on right now. And here's why I want to take a second. If you didn't really come up with anything for you, that's fine. But but spend a little bit of time on this. I really want to encourage you. And here's why. I pulled this quote from Robin Sharma, who's a great author. Uh, he's a Canadian author. He's written a, a handful of books. And what he's talking about is what you focus on grows, what you think about expands, and what you dwell upon determines your destiny. Now, obviously, we're talking destiny. That's We're getting big there. But what really hit for me is that realization of, yeah, where I'm spending all of my time and what I'm thinking about the most, that seems to become bigger and bigger and bigger and bubble up. For example, um, I was talking with my wife. She's had to work with her company a ton this year about systematizing and, and solving problems and figuring out those sort of things. And guess what she sees all the time now? Problems that need to be solved because that's where her focus is. Yeah. And that's not always a bad thing, but... Again, that's why we're starting to talk about gratitude and some of these sort of things is, are we putting any focus on our clients? Are we putting any, you know, focus on that? I saw a great chat in here and I forget who wrote it. It was a little while ago. Oh, Dan, connecting with humans in a genuine way with empathy, right? Like, oh my yeah. gosh, what an amazing focus yeah. there. We're going to have to deal with problem solving. We're going to have to deal with all of those bullet points that we threw out there at some point, but where is our focus line? So why is gratitude something we should even focus on? What do you think? I mean, Alicia, do, I mean, do you listen, have kind of a high I, this level? This is one problem? of my favorite topics because I, um, I I love both the the emotional side of it and then the more like brain science part of it. I know like you're going to pull up a lot of stats. Um, you know, I, I did a session just a couple of weeks ago where I had a stat um, about keeping a gratitude journal and the heart, like Harvard research has shown that just two weeks of keeping a gratitude journal actually rewrites neural pathways and starts to stimulate serotonin production. And so like, for me, I mean, life is hard out there, you know, like it, it's hard for all of us, right? I'm a single mom with three teenagers. You have three little toddlers. Our lives are completely different and we're both always exhausted <laughs> yeah. so for me to be able, for me to be able to show up to my job and for the people around me and like my, the best version of myself, I know that that is an internal job. The best version of myself is an internal job. And, and what I've learned in my life and both the right research backs up is that gratitude is a really, really powerful way to do the internal work in like an easy way. That's like tangible every single day. This isn't some like big hurdle you have have to leap through like practicing gratitude is a tangible thing you can do on the regular basis that does the internal work for you that makes it so that you can show up as your best self absolutely and and you already touched on some of these things and i want to go through these especially for those of you that are maybe a little bit more analytical with the way that you process i know numbers are always fun to kind of see uh you you were talking about some of these sort of things right so some of the scientific things that they have proven to people who are expressing gratitude on a, on a daily and weekly basis, they are literally less stressed. The cortisol is 23% lower in testing people who are expressing gratitude. That's scientific. Your body is producing different things because you're taking the time to be there, right? Um, it's improving your health. This one kind of made me chuckle a little bit, but 25% less dietary fat intake. Let's be real. When we're down in the dumps, when we're not feeling great, what are we doing? I'm reaching for Coffee candy. Cake. I'm eating chocolate. Yes, cake, whatever it is, whatever your thing is. Those little things are little boosts to our system and they make us feel a little bit better for that moment. If we don't need that, we're actually healthier in what we're putting into our bodies. Stronger cardiac function, our heart is functioning at a better rate. Our brain health, it literally is reducing the effects of aging on your brain. It's slowing some of those processes down. Now, don't get me wrong. I'm not saying you're going to start getting younger. Your brain will not start getting younger at any point, no matter how much gratitude you express, but it helps, right? Alicia, you touched on this one. Yep. It boosts dopamine. It literally, the dopamine is kind of the, that happy chemical in your brain. 
it gives you more of that. When you are thinking about gratitude, your brain is actually producing more of these chemicals. Yep. That is wild to think about. Powerful. It's crazy. I mean, I, I think we've all felt to a degree when somebody shows gratitude to us, that of course feels great. But when we take the opportunity and can celebrate somebody, think about why is it so fun to give somebody birthday gifts? Why is it so fun to celebrate if you celebrate Christmas or Hanukkah or whatever that is to give people things because it makes them feel good. And that gives us a rush, right? In that gratitude stuff. We're not stopping there. There's more. It boosts your serotonin levels, which help with your mood, your digestion, your nausea, wound healing, wound healing, wound healing. If you express gratitude, your wounds heal faster. Like what? This stuff is so cool and crazy to me, but it's lowering your blood pressure. It's improving your immune, immune function. It's improving your sleep efficiency. This is something that I started to learn more and more about is it's, it's not about just the amount of hours that you're sleeping. It's mm. what is the quality of your sleep? Yeah, yeah, yeah. These sort of things are helping. I mean, that is nine really great things that I'm sure all of us here would go, yeah, well, I could use some of those, right? Um, and so I just, I love that from thinking about gratitude and how does this affect us personally? Uh, how is it just, just if we take the business side of it out, if you take a little bit more time to express some of this gratitude, you know, what, what do you think that's going to help personally? Now let's take it a step further, right? Mm -hmm. As I've been researching this for this webinar, I've, I've seen some crazy statistics and some of them are really kind of disappointing and sad. And this is one that is a little disappointing, right? 60% yeah. of people said they either never express gratitude at work or do so perhaps once a year. And that's a survey of 2000 people. So that's a decent survey, right? That's not like a, a small, it's not, not like we're at one business. Yeah. Why is that? Why do we feel nervous to do that? Why is that not a staple within our business? Could this be something that could help from an internal standpoint? We talked about those bullet points earlier of, of cutting back. Mm. You know, how do we help that? How do we help retain clients? Well, here's some of the really great benefits of what if you're able to express gratitude within kind of your internal business structure, whatever that is. I don't care if you have a team of two people that you work with or if you work at a company of 150 plus, right? Totally. There's lots of different opportunities. And here's some of the cool benefits of this. One, it costs you literally nothing, right? We're always thinking about that from a business standpoint of if I do this, what's it going to cost me? What's it going to take to invest in that? This, I guarantee will cost you $0. There is no amount of money that you'll have to invest in that. Here's some of the cool effects that it has on your coworkers, on the people on your team. It improves their self-worth and their self-efficacy. Mm -hmm. Now, that's a great thing from a psychological standpoint of going like, well, good, my people will be, will feel better. They will feel happier. Guess They're what? Gonna work better. Yes. This translates directly to your business. Yeah. Think about this. When you roll into business on a day that you're feeling good, you're feeling happy for whatever reason, Right you work more effectively. You just do because you're cruising through things. You're accomplishing things. You're checking stuff off your list. When you're coming in and you're feeling kind of that Eeyore home, ho hum, it takes a lot to do each task. For sure. The effort required is there. So it's going to improve the actual work that you're getting from people. It's going to improve teamwork. How are we communicating with each other? How are we feeling? If 60% of people are saying that they don't express gratitude on a, a yearly basis, they're not going to feel like they can connect on a team to team basis. How do we improve that to get the best work out of our teams, right? It's going to reduce conflict for a lot of the reasons that we talked about building better relationships. Here's some of the stuff that I think is really, really powerful from this as well. Your employees or the people you work with will have a higher job satisfaction. Again, this is statistics. This is not just me saying like, oh, I think they'll probably be happier. No, it's proven with these surveys. They will be happier with their job. What does that mean for you? They're going to stick around a heck of a lot longer. You're not going to be hiring new people. You're not going to be searching for more people. They're going to be motivated and they're going to retain and stay with your company longer. This is direct business stuff, right? Um, this is an interesting one. And then Alicia, I'd love to hear if, if any of these have kind of stood out for you, maybe from your uh, experiences working within you know several businesses and stuff. But I really liked this one. Uh, I've talked with my wife a lot about this, the perfectionism thing. There's a lot of us that struggle with, I, I want things to be perfect. And guess what? When we're not feeling great about the work we're putting out, we strive even further and harder for that perfectionism. When our boss takes those moments to recognize us and say, you're doing a great job, it goes, oh, okay. It probably could have been a little better. Or I could have worked a little harder, but 
I know that that was really good and I can be proud of that work that's there. So again, these are some of the internal benefits that come with that gratitude. But uh, Alicia, what seems that to you? I feel like I've been talking for a long time. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I I love it, Kevin. I love um, I love all of the research that you've done and you're pulling in all of the data because, you know, I, I come from the same angle of it as you do. Like, obviously it's good for you. It feels better and all of that, but there's, there's so much data to show that when a company actually treats their employees, um, like human beings, which it doesn't sound like such a dramatic thing, but when, when the people that you work for and that you work with are able to like, step into some of that softer side of humanity and, and actually show gratitude and actually, you know, show empathy and real connection in the work environment. Like the data 100% supports all of the things you're showing that it's going to retain employees, that they're going to be willing to work harder, um, that when things get tough, they're more likely to want to stick around and, you know, like all of these things. And so, you know, I know my experience at BombBomb, bomb, I always say part of re the reason why I'm such a good evangelist for BombBomb bomb is because not just like, I don't just love our product, but I love this company and I love the people. And part of it is because of, you know, the way that they take care of us. Like, they give us the first Friday of every single month off to be with our families as part of their gratitude practice to like us as employees. That's, it's like our, is that what it's, is that what it is called? The great gratitude Fridays or something? It, I don't it know. It's for like our, mental health and family. Health Whatever it is, like it, it, it it shows up in the way that your people are going to show up for you and you should do it because it's the right thing to do. But honestly, it's going to show up in the way that your people are, are ready to show up for you. So, yep. So I just really want to encourage you and we're going to talk through some strategies of how to kind of lean into you, your company and your internal team a little bit more. The last thing I want to hit of hit on, because of course this is important for any of us that are running businesses is okay, great. So I feel better. I'm healthier. That's delightful. Internally, my team is functioning at a, at a healthier level. That's great. What does that mean externally, right? How does that actually turn into more business and some of those sort of things? Well, I don't think a lot of these bullet points will be surprising for you, but gratitude is going to build way more trust with your client base. I love this second bullet point of it's literally building champions for you. People will be more loyal to you and to your product and to what you offer because you are taking the time to see them as people and show them that they mean something more than just dollar signs, more than just closing a deal, a transaction. They are humans, right? It and they are five times as much money to attract a new client than it does to keep one. And if you can like keep your clients loyal by some of the simple strategies we're going to show you with a product that you already have, like bomb bomb that doesn't cost you anything, like it's a, it's a freebie. Yes, it's awesome. And we're going to go through some of these strategies as we dive into this in just a second here as well. Number three is one we're going to talk about really directly because we've got a really cool, I'm going to call it a case study for lack of a better reference, but literally somebody that works at BombBomb Bomb just putting this into practice and seeing results from it. So we're going to talk about how it improves your visibility. It gets you in front of people that would not normally see you because you're expressing gratitude. Um, improves productivity. We talked about that with your team but that's going to be true for you as well. And it's going to really help from an external standpoint, differentiates you from a heck of a lot of other people. And we'll talk about some of that in our strategies. Uh, this is a really interesting thing that I was reading as I was researching too. People will more freely spend where they feel appreciated. Yeah, totally. I think if we put ourselves in the consumer mindset as well and go, where do I want to buy? Who do I want to work with? All of these things resonate with us, right? Yeah. Like I'm going to buy at some place or I'm going to work with people who I feel like understand me and see me and, and appreciate, appreciate me. me. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, it's huge. And yeah. these are not big things. That's what I want you to hear more and more is that it's not like we're saying you got to go spend five hours a, a week on all of this gratitude stuff. No, we're going to talk about spending a few minutes, potentially a couple times a week. And then quick videos here and there are going to make a huge difference for you. But it's going to build partnerships. It's going to increase your referrals. All of these things are, are some of the external benefits of gratitude. Okay, so let's dive into the nuts and bolts. I think we, we get the why. We all see that at this point. So how do we start to think about framing a playbook? A lot of times uh, when I was actually talking with some people about building this webinar and how do we want it to look, we like the idea of a playbook because it's very prescriptive, right? It's very action-based. Yeah, and and yeah. I think that's a really important thing. However, one of the things that I, I felt my body immediately going like, oh, I don't like the playbook as much is because 
all right, I'm going to be really real. I don't like people telling me what to do. <laughs> so I'm like, you don't know me. You don't know my business specifically. Don't tell me that I have, if I just do these five steps, everything will be better. And so that's where I think the, your playbook is really, really good. So we're going to break it down into kind of four categories and then give you some ideas of how you can do that. But what I want you to do is be really intentional with your business and think about, okay, if I'm thinking about this category, what makes sense for me in this area, right? Yep. So first and foremost, let's dive into it. The first category is you. Yep. We talked Gotta about all the personal benefits, but work. well, and somebody even posted, I, I would have to scroll up a little ways in the chat. Um, oh, it was Lori. Gratitude begets gratitude, mm. right? Yep. If you are not feeling gracious, if you're not feeling grateful for the things that are going on in your life, how often do you think you're going to feel about expressing that to anybody else? Not much. It's a, it's a much harder tug. It's a much harder act to do that. Um, and so really that's kind of the idea behind this is if, if we can't focus on ourselves for a little bit and start to, to build that up in our own lives and our own minds, it's really hard for us to express that in a genuine human way yeah. to the other people that need to see it. Well, so my and- ideas. Yeah, go ahead, Alicia. Sorry. Oh, I was just going to say, I love, I love that you gave multiple things here because, you know, not everyone is going to sit down and do a gratitude journal. In fact, my 17 year old daughter told me one time that she would rather be depressed than be the kind of person that keeps a gratitude journal, (laughs) right? 17 year olds for you. But so like, but you don't have to do all of these, right? It's like, pick what makes sense for you, right? Um, I said, you know, the Harvard research shows that two weeks of keeping a gratitude journal like starts to rewrote those neural pathways, but you don't have to actually like do a gratitude to journal. You could say it out loud. You have to do more than think it or like the best thing that happened today, like taking a few minutes to just write down like what that best thing was. Um, You put 10 minute calendar appointments there. Was that to like just do a 10 minute, like, Hey, I really appreciate you with someone. So here's something that I learned. I think with me, when it comes to all this stuff, the the word intentionality came up for me a lot. It's very easy to be like, Oh, I'll just do that tomorrow. I'll just do that later because it doesn't necessarily feel like as important as a lot of the other things on your list, as the client needs, as some of those things when you're thinking about business. Right. However, it's really easy to all of a sudden look back in a month and be like, I haven't done this in forever. And so what I, I heard actually one of our, our CSS employees here at BombBomb talked about this idea of putting time on your calendar. It's kind of time blocking, time boxing, whatever you want to call it. But she said, look at that event and go, you wouldn't cancel that as if that was with somebody else. So treat that appointment I like, that. like it's an actual appointment. And what that is, is it's building that intentionality that this is important and I'm going to hold this in my daily basis. And and it can be 10 minutes. It can be five minutes. You again, decide what works for you, but I put 10 because I know for me, five minutes is not enough to get into a thought and then out of a thought before I'm distracted and onto something else. Right. So I wanted some time to do that, but the idea is just really being intentional with this. And, and I love some of those other things. So the five good things was something I read about of, if you don't feel like I can spend time every day, great. Mm. Put 15 minutes on a Friday afternoon and go, I'm just going to spend 15 minutes and think about this past week and go, how has my week been? What are five things I'm, I'm really grateful for this week. That's super doable. I think we can all say we can find 15 minutes in a week, right? No matter how busy or crazy our lives are. So find the one that makes the most sense for you. One thing that we do in, in our one-on-one speaking of bomb bomb, uh, my boss, Donovan, every time I hop into a one-on-one, he goes, all right, cool. What's something that you're personally grateful for? What's something that you're grateful for in business? And we just talk about those things specifically. So again, it's the intentionality. It's making the time for it. I wanted to give you all kind of a question with each of these topics that you can ask yourself to start kind of coming up with some of of all these, these ideas as well. And this is one of the ones that I start with. What have I taken for granted? What is something that is so easy to look over that, that I shouldn't, I can tend to get into the, like, everything is hard mentality, right? I've got twin two-year-olds. I've got a seven-year-old. I've got all the things going on in life. And sometimes life feels really hard, but also they're really freaking cute and they're really fun and they're starting to talk. And am I missing those things because I'm just seeing the hard, right? So that's a question that I like to ask myself is just, you know, what am I taking for granted that I don't want to miss? Um, a quote, and I don't think I need to explain, I could have just put Oprah. She's one of the one name people in this world, but it's just a great quote, right? You radiate and generate more goodness for yourself when you're aware of all you have and not focusing on your have nots. So it's just kind of a good reminder of, of why that's important there. Love that. 
Now, what's cool about this and what I like about this idea of a playbook is then, okay, what do we do next step? I think of playbooks and more actionable steps, right? So the next step for me is then how do I take this gratitude that I'm maybe starting to feel because I'm being intentional with that time and start to move it outward. And so for me, the next step here was sphere of influence. And I use that term very specifically. You might use database, you might use client list, but I wanted to expand this beyond just clients, beyond just past clients, whatever that is, right? Uh, I think so often we sometimes forget about the people that are the most important to us, right? When's the last time I, I looked at my wife and was like, hey, I'm really thankful for all of the work you put in. Thank you for doing this. Thank you for I doing this. I it's that. often, Kevin. <laughs> Well, I'd, I'd like to think I try to be very intentional about that, but it never, it can always be more, you know, uh, even for like my son, right? My seven-year-old, hey, thanks for making your bed this morning, buddy. I really appreciate that you yeah. just did that. And it wasn't something that we needed to ask. Uh, they are part of my sphere of influence. Now, is my son going to go start like telling his friends about the work that I do and getting me more business? No, but that's okay. That's not what it's about, right? So what I think is really great about this as a second step is what are some of the things that started to come up that you were feeling grateful for in your personal time? Let's move on those. Let's yeah, act on yeah, those things, absolutely. right? If I thought this week, man, I'm so grateful that I got to host two webinars with Alicia this week. And, and I just love spending time with her. And I'm so thankful for the knowledge that she brings to base. What if I recorded a quick video on Bomb Bomb and actually sent her that video? How long is that going to take me? Two minutes? And I'd probably cry because I'm a <laughs> So it's it's this thing where I can, I feel like sometimes this can feel like a very daunting thing, but it's not. So some of the training tips here, right? When someone comes to mind, what have we thought about in our personal time? Let them know, act on that, take that extra step. When somebody does something for you, thank them for that. Show your appreciation for whatever that is. Some ideas that I was thinking about, just more business related ideas are, are those bottom four points there. Thank yeah. you for your time, right? If we were able to, to schedule some time and you get time is valuable for everybody, Allow people to know that you appreciate that and you saw that and you're thankful for that. Um, I love this second one, this idea of thank you for your consideration. Mm -hmm. We have heard some really interesting stories. I don't know if any specific ones come to mind for you, Alicia, about people who did not get a job, right? They were a salesperson. They bought another product. They went with another realtor, whatever a reason was. But they took the time to send a video that just says, hey, I appreciate that you took the time to get to know me, hear what I was yep. about. Totally understand that it was not the right fit right now, um, but just wanted to let you know that I appreciate that. And then guess what? The other thing fell through. Who are they going to come back to? The one that appreciated them, right? And we're not doing it for those reasons. The goal is not to be like, ooh, I'm going to be sneaky and tricky and try to do psychological things. But taking the time to show people that you appreciate them, that's where they want to spend their money. That's where they want to spend their time. Yeah. Um, and there's some cool stuff there. Thank you for your information, the value you brought. Thank you for your business, right? If you close a deal, that doesn't just mean sweet, cha-ching, money's in the totally. bank. Thank you. Thank you for this yeah. opportunity to serve you in that way, right? You know, another one I thought of here that I do all the time is um, on the LinkedIn, the thank you for your connection request. Mm. Because when people, especially after I've been like at an event or even a virtual event and people send me LinkedIn connection requests, I'll send those quick videos from the, the Chrome extension and be like, hey, thank you so much for reaching out and connecting with me here. Like, I really appreciate the chance um, to, you know, be more connected to you here on LinkedIn, right? So like, that's such an easy it's such an easy, quick one that has such an impact on like, I mean, from as a representative bomb bomb standpoint of like growing that like goodwill and like, wow, like, again, I don't do it because I'm like, Ooh, maybe they'll buy bomb bomb if I send them a nice <laughs> thank you video. But it is that like, this is how I want to represent our company. Like, wow, thank you for wanting to connect and like grow my network and your network. Right. I'm not going to lie, Alicia, I do want to picture you like stopping a recording and then being like, ha, ha, ha. God, I'm with the video again. <laughs> um, but it's, and I'm also, I want to be, you know us, we like to be really vulnerable and honest with you guys. There are a lot of times with that LinkedIn connection request is a perfect example where I get a connection. I'm excited. I'm like, oh, I don't really feel like recording a video right now. Mm -hmm. Right. Like it just feels like an, an extra step. Do I have the energy? I've got other stuff going on. It feels like almost every single time I feel that and do it are the times I get responses back I'm like, dude, that was awesome. It's so nice to meet you. Right. And you're like, yeah. that was worth the two minutes I had to spend yeah. on it. So just a great reminder there, a question you can ask. And then I actually want to show you an example of this as well. When you're done, how can you go one step further? Right. It's kind of that like shock and awe, that wow factor of how do we do one more thing than we necessarily needed to do, or was a necessity for our process? How can we take that extra step? 
so often that's going to be the thing that really blows somebody away and is the differentiating thing in why they would remember you or continue to work with you. I wanted to show you this example. This is one of our amazing bomb bomb friends who worked with somebody, had a partnership with somebody, worked on, I think, went and spoke at an engagement and basically just said, you know what? I appreciated that. I'm going to go home and take the time to record a quick, simple video. It'd be sincere, be honest, but it's that next step to say, hey, I appreciate you reaching out, giving me the opportunity to bring some expertise to what you did. So I want you to see this as a great example of the simplicity of these, the quickness of these, um, and how it doesn't have to be this like daunting task that you have to take on. Hi, Erica. Thanks again for having me come and do some additional in-servicing and education on the Z-Flex boot. I think we had a great turnout. Your staff was really engaged, and I think things went really well overall. So just let me know if there's anything else you need or if I need to come back for more. Shelly and I are happy to do that for you. Um, if there's any questions, please let me know. Otherwise, have a great week. We'll talk to you soon. Bye. It's just so simple. Super it's so simple. simple, and that's what I love about it. And, right? and really, that didn't take her any more time than than what it took her to say those words. But it yep. has such a lasting impact. And I think that's I think that's one of the things that I love about it is that like when you're sending a video to someone like that, like you don't know what kind of day you're ha they're having. You don't know what their experiences have been, but they get a video like that and it has a lasting impact um, for something that took you just a couple seconds. Mm -hmm. And honestly, when you look at this sort of stuff, when we're talking about this as a concept as a whole, this is how we all want to be known and remembered, right? Yeah. As people that are grateful and, and appreciative, we've all had to work with the opposite of that. And none of us want to be that. <laughs> I don't even think those people want to be that. It's There's a lot of things going on in life, but if we could take that extra step, it, it makes a heck of a step in the right direction. Yeah. All right. So did you have something to add there, Alicia? Oh, I was just going to say, I saw someone say in the chat, I know Tora put a support article there, but someone said, um, can you add captioning to the video messages? And we do um, on the Bomb Bomb Plus subscription and team accounts, um, we do have captions and um, transcriptions available on that subscription level. So that is a feature that's available now. Yeah. Love that. Thanks for bringing that up and asking that question. All right, next step in this playbook, how do we take it kind of from our sphere of influence? Now this technically could sort of fit in our sphere of influence, but I wanted you to think really specifically about your partners, right? And really, how do you, you might be sitting there going like, how do I determine who my partners are specifically? Basically, who has impacted you in your business directly? Who are you dependent on to some degree to help your business continue to move yeah. forward? I put just some ideas here. Um, and just to expand what you may be thinking about, I think for me, logically, I worked in real estate for a little while, property management. I was dependent on my vendors. Mm -hmm. If I did not have my plumbers and my AC, my HVAC people, my handyman, those sort of things, I could not keep my business running, right? Yeah. Those are people I'm directly dependent on. If you're in the mortgage space, you are dependent on your broker. You're dependent on the people who are running your numbers. On those your are really, girls. absolutely, your realtor partners. Uh, those are great, quick, easy places to start. Some maybe further ones, right? That that you may not consider a partner specifically, but uh, people that are that you are following on social media who are giving you information that's helping you grow your business. Authors of books that you've read that you really appreciate. Podcast hosts, right? I think we all are continually trying to expand our knowledge and learn new things. They may not directly be a partner. They may not even know who we are, but are they giving us information? Are they helping us expand what we want? So a good question for, for this partner section, and then I'm really excited to, to kind of dive into this case study, if you will. Um, but imagine what your business would look like without these people. How does that look? If you are thinking, oh my gosh, my business would not survive without these people, that's somebody that's worth spending a video to, yep. right? And letting yep. them know. And let's be real, I mean, going back to kind of the vendor idea there, how often do you think that plumbers and people that are working with their hands all day, handyman that are fixing door hinges and things like that, how often do you think they're getting gratitude messages sent to them? Totally. not very I, I, I want to believe a lot. I really do. But I know when I get in the thick of it, I can miss that stuff. And, and we don't want to be that. We want to be somebody that when we call, when we pick up the phone because we need something, they're excited for our phone call. And they yeah. know how much we appreciate that specific work. Uh, do you have anything, I don't, Alicia, I don't know if, if you have any that you were thinking maybe expanding on these bullet points. Is there kind of any other ones that you would think of? Nah, get to the case. The case. Okay, cool. All right. So 
Um, Steve Passanelli, he's our CMO. He's our chief marketing officer here at BombBomb. Bomb. And he's been with BombBomb. Bomb. Was he here before you were, Alicia? I mean, he's been here uh, for a long he time. He started like right around the same time I did, like maybe okay. just a little bit before. So right almost eight years. Okay. So yeah. So he's he's been here for a very long time. Great guy. He runs our, our marketing team. But he really wanted to challenge himself and this idea in general of, am I showing people that I appreciate them? So he made a list of people of literally some of the things I put on here, uh, authors some from books that he's read, podcasts that he listens to on a regular basis, people that he follows on social media that are giving him some of these bullet points and things that he's thankful for. And he did exactly what we're telling you to do. Record a quick video. Now I love, he's obviously using some of our tactical stuff that we talk about all the time with personalizing it, right? Using that animated preview. He put the thank you with the name on there. He even held her book up specifically. Yeah. And I've watched a bunch of these different videos and he does various forms of this in almost every video. I mean, these are like, I mean, in, in chat, when people are like, can you give us some ideas or like, you know, how to, people always want to say like, how do I get my videos played? How do I get my videos played? And Kevin and I have done entire sessions on this, but what Steve is doing here is very, very powerful because number one, so like, you have to understand that these are um, authors and podcast hosts and people on social media that have bigger followings that like Steve Passanelli follows that he's learning from. So, so these are people that like get, have lots of people that follow them that probably want their attention. So he's reaching out to authors and podcast hosts that have tons of people in their DMs, right? So number one, he's got Francesca's name on that whiteboard. Well, we're psychologically drawn to our name. This also lets her know that it's personal. He's also holding up her book there. So now it's like, okay, so this person has sent me a personal video with my name on the board and they're holding out my book. Like the curiosity gap for someone to not play that video, well, we know what resulted for Steve because he saw what it was 80%. So he ended up, I was looking through, he, he sent me his whole list. He ended up sending 124 of these videos over a period of time, right? He didn't try and like just bombard these in a couple of days. He, this it was, was over a almost a year span. Yeah. Yeah. It was months and months and months. He said 124 videos from those 124 videos. He has gotten 99 direct responses. That's an 80% response rate. And I'm not just talking about like, they even said, thanks. They, they responded back or actually clicked to meet with him and schedule time with him and talk more about what he learned or they sent. And I'm going to show you one of the examples of one of the, the ways that this expanded his growth. But let me play you this video first. So we can talk about that. The other thing I want to touch on, Alicia, you're talking about the, the name and the book and how we personalize this. Another thing that, that we directly do for you here at BombBomb, Bomb, but that he took advantage of is this time bar at the bottom. He knows that if he's doing cold outreaches to people, I'm not going to get them to play a five minute video. So look, it's 41 seconds long. I'm going to play you the whole video so you can see from beginning to end how he built that, how he recorded it. But know that that's a really important thing that we can take advantage of to get more video plays as well is keeping them nice and short. So we're not asking for a lot of time from people. So watch this and then we'll keep talking about it. Hey, Francesca, I just wanted to reach out and say thank you. Uh, I'm a few pages shy of finishing your book. It's absolutely fantastic. I have so many takeaways and pages of notes, but the one thing that I've, I've used a lot already and just kind of changed my world, and it's so simple, is the could versus should language. Um, and it's helped me get through uh, numerous uh, small little obstacles in my business. So I like to practice gratitude each day. Uh, you are my point of gratitude for today, for putting the book together. I look forward to following you. Um, and I hope your family um, I hope everyone is safe and healthy during these times. Have a great week. See you. It is physically impossible to be upset if you get that video from somebody. Okay. Like, how could you not yeah. feel something with that, right? Yeah. And she obviously did. And she literally took that and wrote a tweet about it. She went, oh my gosh, this impacted me enough where I'm going to take another step, right? I've written about the importance of expressing gratitude. Adam Grant, if you don't know who Adam Grant is, oh my gosh, he's got all sorts of great stuff. Feel free to look him up. But She's trying to practice it daily. And today I was reminded of how powerful it can be, especially when done creatively. I hope this inspires others as much as it inspired me. She put a link to the video. Um, she thanks Steve and tags Steve directly. 
this is okay. Let's just think conceptually from a social media standpoint right now. Totally. Not only is he now in front of all of her followers yep. as being a great example of being grateful, they can watch his video and get to know Steve. Yep. They're going to now look into what he's doing. I'm interested about that. And she's tagged a very prominent author, coach, speaker, who is now going to be seeing Steve's name as well. And what Steve is, this is, again, not the reason that Steve is sending these messages. He's sending them to genuinely, genuinely let her know, I appreciate your work and I'm learning yeah. from it. But oh my gosh, this is expanding his reach and his market and his visibility exponentially. And all he yeah. did was record a 41 second video and send it to her. It's so powerful. It's such a win. It's in, And he did it 124 times. 99 people directly responded to his messages. I saw his spreadsheet. He's keeping track of all of it just out of curiosity. That is really, really powerful. I, I've seen some chats of what do I, yeah, you mentioned this before, Alicia. What do I do? What are some good ideas for videos? This yes. right here. Yes. Take these opportunities. Send, send thank you videos to the people in your business that your business couldn't survive without. Like, and the, be the beautiful thing about these is it is really, it's almost impossible to do these wrong. Yeah. The yeah. only way is if you're not genuine, right? Totally. If you are real you and genuine, you can't mess these up. There's yeah. such a safe a place to start. You yeah. don't need a script. You don't need to figure out what kind of hook you need to write in the email to get them to want to play the video. If you're sending a video to someone that you have a business relationship with and the title of that video or the subject line is thank you, I appreciate you, they're going to press play on that video. Like this is the easiest thing that you could do with your bomb bomb account that is going to have like an actual it's going to have an emotional impact on the people, but it's going to have a practical impact on your business. We know it is. The data shows it. Well, going back to those personal things that you feel when you're expressing gratitude, guess what? When somebody receives this video, all of those chemical things are happening in their body as well. The serotonin, all that stuff is starting to fire for them as yeah. well. That connects them to you. That and builds that connected. deeper trust. And all of the chemical firing that they're getting in their brain when they watch that video is connected to you and your face and the sound of your voice. It's yeah. It's powerful. That's powerful stuff. All right. So fourth step, last step in this playbook here. And then I want to get to the gratitude that we want to show you guys as well, which I'm excited about. Uh, how do we show gratitude and expand this within our company as well? Now, you don't have to do this playbook in one, two, three, four order if you don't want to, right? But the idea is that we start with ourselves and then figure out sp strategic ways to expand that outside. And this is a really impactful one. We've talked about this a couple of times already in this webinar. There's a lot of difficulty going on in business right now, right? Our economy is, is struggling in a lot of ways. I say our as in we live in the US, but I know every country is feeling this to some degree, right? So who has impacted you and your business directly? Who are people that you are working with that you could show some gratitude towards, right? Your boss, your manager, a coworker. Maybe I, I want to recognize some accomplishments, something that somebody did within my team, within my business. I want to show appreciation for some help that somebody gave me to help get a, a job or a project across the line that I needed to get across the line, right? These are some quick, easy ways to think from an internal standpoint. The question that I like to ask myself is what's been done that I didn't even notice. And yeah. it's a really quick, easy way to just take a step back and go, I'm going to spend five minutes and, and try to find something that I didn't even realize happened within our company. And thank somebody for that. We've got some really cool stuff at place at BombBomb Bomb where we can literally award like points to people um, to say thank you for your help or I noticed you did something. And then those points turn into, we can go turn them into all sorts of different things, which is a really cool thing. We have had, oh my gosh, the um, the awesome office has been something we have had for yeah. ever at BombBomb. Bomb. And it's a little harder now that we're not in the office as much, but it was a great way. Every two weeks we could submit Hey, I saw this person doing this and they could get a corner office in our office for two weeks if they, you know, got nominated to that. So some really cool tactical ways to just take a step back and go, Hey, I appreciate you. I see you. I'm thankful for what you're doing or how you're helping me, or even just, I'm really thankful that you are my boss, that I report to you because you see me for who I am and you see the work that I'm doing. Here's a stat that is absolutely nuts. 66% of employees leave their job because of lack of appreciation. We all want to blame salary. We all want to blame, I can't work from home or I have to be in the office. We want to 
we want to look at these very specific tactical things that we can tag in on. It really is not that. So much of the reason people are looking for other jobs is because they don't feel like they're seen in the work that they're doing. Yeah. This management goes so far for retention. Uh, there's a book that my wife is reading. I'm, the name is blanking on me right now. But they basically said, you can offer as many one-hour massages or meditation rooms or free lunches to your team as you want. But if those people do not feel seen and appreciated for the work that they are doing from their managers and their bosses, it doesn't matter. It's not yeah. going to resonate long-term. This is so so important. And honestly, Alicia, you were talking about it a little bit. For me, this has been a game changer for me with BombBomb. Bomb. I will be loyal to BombBomb Bomb for so long because of how I am seen by my bosses. Absolutely. And that's not just my direct boss, Donovan. Uh, JB, who's been with BombBomb Bomb for literally forever, uh, he's our CFO. And he takes time out of his day to send me videos. Hey, Kevin, how you doing? Mm -hmm. Hey, I just noticed you did this. It looks great. Those things take took him 10 seconds but feel yep. like the world to me. Yep. It's so impactful. And I want to show you a quick example of this. This is Marvette. She's actually a real estate agent. So those of you that are in the real estate space, or maybe you've got a mortgage team or those sort of things, uh, it, it doesn't matter how big or small your team is at all. She was actually at a, a real estate conference when she decided to record this video. And again, it's simple. It's straightforward. But the, the biggest thing that we talk about with these gratitude videos is sincerity. Yeah. You have to be real. You have to be sincere. Uh, take a look at this. It's a great way, a great example of, of just showing your internal team. I appreciate you. Hey, Scott, it's Marvette. I am in Orlando, Florida, enjoying the conference. Um, you know, just sending you a little note to let you know I'm thinking about you, one. And two, um, to let you know how much I appreciate you. Um, it's been a minute since I've actually said that to you, but I really do appreciate you. Um, and I am so glad that you're on my real estate team. Take care. Talk to you soon. Um, and we'll catch up next week. Bye-bye. It's, it's, so it's so easy. It's so good. Like, you know, we hear from people that are, there's people spend so much time worrying about like their lighting or the camera being in the right place or what kind of equipment or the audio in the background or whatever. But like, the impact that that had on, was it Scott? <laughs> I think that yeah. Scott. like the impact that that had on Scott, like Scott didn't care about, you know, any background noise or lighting or anything like that. Like that had a lasting impact on Scott. I know it did. So it's so powerful. What you see when you watch that video, for me at least, is that they thought of me, they took time out of their day to just appreciate me. That's all I care about. That's all I need to feel. And that immediately makes me feel greater, better. So here's what we want to do. I want to put this up so that you all can grab your phones, do yep. a screenshot on your computer, That's take a picture, a picture of, of this screen, because I want this to be a quick, easy reminder. Heck, you know, you could even do, you can even set this as your wallpaper on your computer as a reminder. When I've got all my windows pulled up, all of a sudden they moved out of the way and I see a little glimpse. It reminds me to take an opportunity to be grateful for the people that are impactful to my business, right? I think it's so interesting. One of the takes that I really wanted to focus on for this webinar specifically was we focus on how do we show gratitude during Thanksgiving? How do we show gratitude during the holidays? Those are wonderful opportunities, but are we missing 10 months of the year because we're only thinking we need to do it at this time. That's what I want this playbook to be. I want this time of the year to be to be kind of a springboard for you for 2023, to create this opportunity where you can have, hopefully, we talk in November and you look back on your themes for 23 and gratitude is one of the ones that pops up for you. And I'm really, really interested to see how that affects you from that angle. So take a screenshot of this. I'll even try and pull this back up at the end if we've got a second here, but I wanna make sure we've got a few minutes to dive into something that we uh, want to offer to you guys and give to you guys and show some gratitude. Uh, we've actually made it a new feature within BombBomb Bomb that is something that we have heard for a long time that people were hoping for and wanting. Alicia, do you want to tease this? And then I'll even show them how it works. I mean, people have been asking for this for as long as I have worked at BombBomb, Bomb, which is almost eight years. So this has been a very, very long coming time coming. I love the tool. It's so easy to use. Da, 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 da. We have launched <laughs> video trimming, which means that you now have the option to trim off either the front and or the end of your video. So if you've ever had that moment when you were like, 
that was the perfect video. And then I went to find the, the space bar or to stop the button. And then I sneezed or I couldn't find it. <laughs> or my kid ran into the room bleeding. Guess what? You can just trim off the back of that video. It's great. I mean, we've all had those moments where I'm like, I'm going to hit the space bar and stop this. But I had selected another window or something. And I'm sitting there going click, 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 click. And then it's just like, Ah, oh, do I just send it or do I re-record? What do I do? So I want to show you real quick. I pulled up an actual Bomb Bomb account here, and and the trimming is going to be available on the Bomb Bomb Plus subscriptions, the team subscriptions. Um, those are the ones I think I believe it's available for right now. So once you've recorded a video within the Bomb Bomb platform, you can actually go into the back end with this great edit button. So I'm on the videos tab, just for your reference as well. You'll click the edit button here, and this actually gives you a, a couple of different things that maybe you didn't even know were in here. Right? We can add a call to action to the video. Um, we can adjust the thumbnail or take a picture or something like that. But here's where that trimming option is. So if I click on this and then click this blue start trimming button, there's a couple of different ways I can do this. I can just play the video or I can drag through and kind of find the timeline on this. And then our team has built these really, really great buttons that are trim to playhead at the beginning and the end of it, right? So if you if you had one of those situations where like your kid runs in at the end of the video, but it's still good. We just have this weird ending now. You can literally go find that spot hit click, click this trim to playhead button, and it automatically cuts it right to where you are in the video. So it's a piece of cake. You can even play it. That's another easy way. Stop if you play it, you watch this little you can thing make sure you pause and then click trim, right? When you get to that spot that you want to trim to. And then the cool thing is once you've kind of got that where you want to, you can click the save button and it gives you options. Do you want to save the original and then have this as a secondary option? I'm not going to tell you best practices on that. I get nervous about that because then I might send out the wrong one or I don't know, but you've got that option. You can rename it so you can put, you know, the appropriate name there, or you can choose this where it deletes the original altogether and you just have this new trimmed version of this video. So you can choose kind of what you want to do. As soon as you click save, you'll be back in your video library. That video will be turned up for you. I mean, it's a great, keeping the original is a great option if you're going to put together a blooper reel at the end of the year. I'm just saying. That's true. Yeah. And I bet you the blooper reel will get you more views than like any other video you sent throughout the year. <laughs> we have a whole channel in our internal bomb bomb stuff of all of our mess ups. And it yep, is so true. funny to just see people screw up and share it. And it's just a, a great reminder that none of us are perfect at this. None of us are doing this yeah. right all of the time. So hopefully that is something that will be beneficial for you. Again, we don't want to lean on the trimming and have to trim every single video, but we want you to know that it's there Option as kind of a, a fail safe in case something goes wrong. Yep. Um, but we're really, really excited for you there. So uh, let's see what else we have. I want to leave you with one quick video. And, and, and we're going to stand to answering questions. We're going to play this video uh, while um, Kevin and I are going to start looking at questions and we're going to answer some questions. So if you've been holding on to your questions, throw them into the Q&A box. Um, I see there's some popping up there in the chat. We'll try and answer some of those too. But um, if you've been waiting to ask your question, go ahead and start uh, throwing some questions there in the Q&A box and we'll um, take some time to answer what we can, okay? Yeah, I want to finish it off with a name that a lot of us are familiar with. Um, I literally just stumbled across this when I was doing a lot of gratitude stuff. Gary V, Gary Vaynerchuk is, I don't even know the right term. He does so many different things. He runs an entire marketing company. He took his family's wine company from not making a ton to a massive wine company within a few years. And now he's got his own marketing and advertising agency called VaynerMedia that is just uh, massive. He's got a huge social media presence, really, really interesting, funny guy. But he was talking about yeah. how gratitude is such an important piece of how he functions. And I thought, what a great way to leave us kind of on a, on a warm foot here. So take a look at this video and watch him talk about why it's important to him. I am uncomfortably happy a shocking percentage of my life. And that comes very simply from the fact that I am disproportionately grateful. There's almost a billion people on earth that don't have access to clean water. Like, what are we complaining about? Anybody who's watching this right now is gifted. That is a blessing. We are so fortunate that this is what you're watching in the middle of a day. You know how lucky that life is? People have real problems, real devastations, real tragedies. So every day I wake up, I'm grateful. And thus, this gorilla is huge for me. So that gorilla, he literally has called the gratitude gorilla. He has started drawing characters that are now, you can buy cards of these characters, you can buy stuffed animals, and that's his gratitude gorilla. He I made something to remind him. I am so grateful. I'm so lucky. I love that he drew attention to. If you're sitting here right now watching this video, we're pretty dang lucky, right? We are so 
fortunate to be able to be doing that in the middle of our day with the devices that we have, with all of the things, a roof over our heads, right? We could go on a list there. So um, I definitely want to jump into q and I'm going to throw up this playbook again, just so you guys yeah. can take pictures of it in case you've missed it at all. I want yeah. you to have that opportunity. Yes, um, I will make sure that we get a copy over to our team to send this out in the replay as well. So if you're like, I don't know how to do a screenshot, don't feel bad, no big deal. Um, we'll do that. But uh, thank you all for being here. If you need to hop off, we understand we're getting close to the hour. We'll hang out for a few more minutes and answer some of these questions that are coming up, but we deeply appreciate all of you. We really do consider you part of the bomb bomb family. And we thank you a ton for being here. So Alicia, what kind of questions do you see pop up? So I saw a question there from Tom. He wanted to know, is there a list you can provide of possible phrases or statements to put on sign in intro videos? How do we see the training with ideas to capture attention and get the video opened? Well, Tom, you're in luck because uh, just a couple months ago, in fact, Kevin and I did a session called Get Your Videos Played More Often. And if you go to bombbomb.com forward slash webinar, bombbomb.com forward slash webinar, you can actually go and see all of our replays of our past trainings. I let you know at the beginning, some of our trainings are a lot more um, strategic or tactical or product. And so um, that one is really, really strategic on things you can put on those whiteboards, ideas for subject lines, ways to get people um, to actually watch your whole video. That's a great session to get started there. Um, yeah, one other thing I'll throw out there as well, Alicia, just another resource because we always want to make sure you guys see as many of these as possible. If you're in your bomb bomb account and you hover over your name, we also have a really cool on-demand learning program. This is kind of my baby, so I like to point it out as much as possible, but um, it's called the Bomb Bomb Studios, and it's all about on-demand learning. It's like I can go through a course at my own pace and my own speed, and guess what, Tom? We actually have one. If you go over here to best practices, we have one for email engagement. How do you get the most engagement on your emails and formulate that? And we also have one, if I scroll over here, uh, for video engagements. So if you're wanting to learn how to get your videos played and some best practices with that, all of that's there and you can access the Bomb Bomb Studios within your Bomb Bomb account. So just another resource, depending on what makes the most sense for you, but both are going to talk to you through some, some great strategies there. Yeah. Um, I wanted to answer this question from Troy. Troy wanted to know um, that when he's puts Bomb Bomb into his CRM, it sends and it works well, but then when he gets his tracking report, it just says someone watched and he doesn't know the email address. Well, that is what happens when you actually are sending the email from another system. If you're sending it from your CRM, your CRM would have to have its own tracking to know who's opening up that specifically. So um, unfortunately, if you want to have the specific email address tracking, like saying that this person watched it, you ha would have to send it from within the bomb bomb system. So it's just, it's the way email works, unfortunately, Troy, but if it's working well from your CRM, um, I, honestly, I'd probably keep sending it from your CRM. Um, and, and maybe, it's that's a tough one. It's that's a, it's a real tough one because I don't necessarily want you to move your contacts all over to Bomb Bomb just to get that email address line by line tracking. Did he but, say it was an evergreen video? I didn't hear the entirety of the question. Was it a video? Well, he, was he says that when again? he says that when he sends a video in his CRM, like he puts the Bomb okay. Bomb video in his CRM, it just says that someone watched it. So one of the great practices that I have done, Troy, and again, it depends on the strategy you're trying to work with here, but if I'm sending personal videos, I cannot emphasize enough to title and name your videos and come up with a naming convention that works for you. But for me, that is always including the first name of the person that I'm sending to. So example, if I'm sending one to Alicia, hey, Alicia, wanted to answer those questions or whatever kind of a little call to action there is. What's great about that is if I'm sending a video to Alicia and it's got her name in it and I see that someone watched it, I know it's Alicia because she's the only person that's gotten that video. So it's a little more difficult with evergreen with videos that you're using time and time again. Unfortunately, that's a, a tough spot to be in. Um, but the, the naming of the video can at least help direct some direction as far as who it might be that might be engaging with that. So I don't know if that helps at all. Yeah, I don't see any other questions and it is right at 11 o'clock. Look at um, us. A great way to end. Listen, Lori, <laughs> thank you so much. Lori said this was the highlight of her day and she's going to go out and get a gratitude gorilla and a white. <laughs> I love it. 
Uh, everybody, I know I just said this to the people that had to leave early, but thank you. Thank you for for trusting Alicia and I. Thank you for trusting Bomb Bomb. We love that we get to be a part of not only your business and your video journey, but a part of your lives. It means so much to us that you guys put that trust in us. Tara, Michelle, thank you for all of the yeah. answers in chat and the help that you provide. Alicia, you're a rock star. You know, I appreciate you so much. Thank you for everything you're bringing to the table and all of the just amazing knowledge and information you give to the rest of us. We appreciate you deeply. Well, thank you, Kevin. I'm always happy to be here. Look at all this love in the chat. <laughs> See, we just start saying gratitude and show love and it, and it comes back. So it thank is. you all. We hope you have a wonderful rest of your November. If you're in America, happy Thanksgiving in the next few weeks. We hope you have a wonderful holiday season and we can't wait to see you next month for whatever we got in store for you then. Have great holidays, guys. Bye. Happy Wednesday, everybody.